lectures last year. They, they haven't changed that much, but I'll, uh, I'll take you through them and hopefully some of them will come true as well. Um, the first thing I want to say is just to talk in general about uh, cryptography and AI. So, if you walk into a computer science department, in fact, if you'd have walked into a computer science department in the last three decades, you'd have probably seen a lot of research in these two areas, the area of cryptography and the area of AI. Um, in each of them, there are, there, there's, a whole different, there's a whole range of different topics that are covered and have been developed over the years. On the AI side, it really starts with statistical regression um, and analy data analytics and neural networks and machine learning and so on. Um, and on the cryptography side, it's mathematical certainty. So it's digital signatures, encryption, and so on. Um, so these two things, uh, these two worlds, we see them as complementing each other. One is giving you a very rich answers through, uh, through AI, but it's all about, about a level of certainty. Right? It's all about statistical regression underneath it. And the other is giving you absolute certainty about things. Um, if I think about the, the world we live in today and really some of the forces at play, especially on the sort of more consumer side, um, we see the social media networks and a lot of the information that's promoted, we don't know whether it's, whether it's true, whether it's not. It's very difficult to understand what's behind things. Um, and so I think there's, more and more, uh, there's going to be more and more emphasis on trying to understand the source of information and what's there. If you go to an AI and you receive an answer and you ask it how did it derive that answer, it's not usually going to be able to tell you. Um, so there is a need, there's a need in society, and I think equally a need in business, to have this certainty about source of information. Um, the, the, the second thing that we get out of both of these technologies, and the reason why there's so much research and so much progress in business as well, uh, is efficiency. In AI, we, get, we obviously get automation, and especially now with the, the um, LLMs, we get more and more automation for, for tasks that were that are increasingly complicated. In cryptography, and blockchain really being a subset uh, of cryptography, um, we get, but, but blockchain is really the area where we get more of the efficiency. We get efficiency around payments, tokenization, digital assets, delivery versus payment, decentralized finance, and so on. That's where the efficiency is there. Uh, so it's the efficient, from my perspective, it's the efficiency that drives the, 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 I guess, the innovation, the funding, the interest, and so on, in each of these areas, and we see them as complementing each other. So the first prediction is that the pendulum swings. And right now, there's clearly a lot of interest in AI, and it has been for the last 12 months uh, since ChatGPT uh, came onto the scene. Um, and we've seen, we're, we're, we're seen, we've seen that at the expense of interest in blockchain, which was, it had a lot of interest in, uh, in a couple of years before then. Um, but we, we think this is a pendulum. Uh, we think that there's a need for both, and they complement each other. Um, and the AI uh, um, interest in investment right now uh, is, is very high and kind of feels like there's uh, almost overshooting in, in terms of uh, in some ways. Um, and so we do think that the pendulum will swing back, and it will probably swing back and forth many times as we have these developments and these tipping points in each, in each area. So that was the first prediction. Uh, by the way, I don't know whether that will actually happen in 2024, but uh, we, we hope we hope it will happen soon. Um, the second is, in, is is completely different. It's in relation to, to blockchain specifically, uh, and in relation to wallets. So one of the biggest uh, points of friction when using blockchains, uh, cryptocurrencies in particular, uh, but really any blockchain solution is wallets. Um, and the solutions that we have so far, we have wallets like MetaMask, um, and we have hardware wallets like Ledger, and um, these do the job. But you have to be quite technical to, to, to install them, to use them, to deal with them. Um, and we found that as a point of friction, and really it comes up on almost every project we work on. Uh, there's a technology that's shown up, showed up, not really through blockchain, uh, but it's just shown up in the last 12 months, um, and it's called Passkeys. Um, Passkeys um, is a technology that's come through Google and Apple, uh, and it's come through the, the work that they've done with password managers. So the password managers allow you to enter a password into one of your devices, and for that password to be shared through their infrastructure with your other devices. Um, and they've extended that infrastructure, uh, all those password managers, to include this thing called the passkey. And what the passkey does is actually a private key. And the private key is generated on one of your devices, and it's used to sign in instead of a password. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's because it is. That's how blockchain signatures work. That's how blockchain transactions are sent. So we've been looking at this and, and really seeing a solution that we could use in blockchains. Um, where recovery, where, where the private key is really held inside this passkey infrastructure, uh, whether it's Apple, Google, or enterprises as well, but also enterprise systems have also been uh, including this uh, for passwordless login. Um, but we think this can be used as a wallet. 
in many cases. Um, and it takes away the need to have a mobile app. It takes away the need to have uh, sort of dedicated applications uh, or complex systems for users to manage their keys, but also to recover, because recovery is through these infrastructures as well. Um, but for pass keys to actually be useful in blockchain, we combine them with a technology called account abstraction, which is also something that's come on the scene the last 18 months or so. We'll see more of, and that's really a way of managing accounts through a smart contract, where the smart contract can validate the key that's been used to sign a transaction. And so what we do is we allow the smart contract to, to verify the signature of a pass key key, and then we can use that as a wallet. So that's prediction number two. Let's see how that goes. Uh, prediction number three. Um, this is one that I talked about last time as well. Um, zero knowledge rollups are a technology that's <coughs> been talked about for a few years now, but it's really started to mature and be released in various platforms in the last 12 months. Um, the way zero knowledge rollups work is that there is a, a what we call a layer one, a main network, uh, a main blockchain network, but instead of that network doing all of the work, running all of the contracts and all of the transactions, that's delegated to what we call layer two networks. Those layer two, two networks process the transactions, the smart contracts, and so on, and a zero-knowledge proof is generated that proves the work of the, in those blocks and those transactions, and that's sent up and verified on the layer one. That allows us to scale these blockchains so that we use and inherit the decentralization in a, in a decentralized layer one, um, and we're able to run lots of transactions and contracts and, and get speed and so on in the layer two. So this is a technology that's just started to really um, be released and rolled out in earnest, um, and we're seeing more and more interest in it. Um, and we're, we're working with ourselves. The fourth uh, prediction, and there are only five, the fourth is, uh, is really an extension of the third. Um, and the, the theme for tonight is reimagining enterprise blockchain. And we look at zero knowledge rollups, and one of the things we can do with these rollups is we can create these networks and we can have sub networks. So if you're an enterprise, you could create your own, you could either run a node or you could run a network of nodes in isolation where the zero knowledge proofs are sent up to a layer two or a layer one network to be verified. And that doesn't reveal your data, it doesn't reveal your transactions. So you get privacy from the public networks um, and you can run these nodes in isolation. So these uh, different vendors are calling them different names, but AppChains is kind of a common name that we've seen across a few of them. Uh, so this is something that we're going to see, we, we believe we're going to see enterprises uh, explore more and more in the, in the coming months and years. And the final one, which I also mentioned last time as well, uh, is uh, hardware secure enclaves. So for those of you who know us, we do a lot of work with, with these enclaves, in particular around the product and uh, the development work. This is a, a place, in the, you can think of it as a place inside Intel's computer chip, and the different manufacturers, they all have different solutions or equivalent solutions for this. Um, it's like a box inside the chip where you can put private data, encrypted data in. Um, the administrator of that machine or someone who access to that machine can't access that data. Um, so you can think of it as hardware protected inside this box, um, and so you can do private computation in there. Um, and that's something that we've, we've been incorporating in our products, and we believe that we're going to see more and more in particular enterprise solutions. Uh, another term that's used to describe this is confidential computer. Um, so that was a brief summary of uh, five predictions that we're making. Um, but as we did last year, we're, we're going to publish an updated much more detailed uh, description of these technologies and others that we're seeing emerge and that we're starting to adopt ourselves. Um, and so we've got the report for 2024. This is 10, 15 pages, so there's a lot more, a lot more detail in there. Um, and finally, something that we launched last year uh, and, and it's been really fun to do. Uh, so we've got a podcast um, and we've had different guests uh, that we've worked with over the years and we've met over the years featured on the podcast. Um, the last one, um, I think it was with Chris Brahma, uh, who's a law professor at uh, Georgetown University and one of the top experts on um, regulation, on, on crypto, and crypto regulation. Uh, before that, I spoke to Human from the World Food Programme, who we worked with there. That was a really a fantastic conversation. So if you haven't listened to the podcast yet, then um, check that out as well.